Well, for a long, long time, there have been arguments between big men and smaller men as to who is the best lifter. Of course, the bigger men, the bigger women, they're gonna lift more weight. And so they say, well, it's clear, you know, we're the strongest. And then the lighter people say, well, let's just use body weight and we'll see how many times you lifted body weight. And uh, if we do that, then we're the strongest. Uh, you, you guys, you women, you must just be lazier than we are. We're the better lifters. This argument's not winnable. And so Bob Hoffman in the 1930s, York Barbell Company, he came up with a formula and, and it adjusted uh, coefficients so that you could multiply against a man's total or a woman's, mostly in those days, a man's total. And you could come up with a way to judge. Now, these were Bob's numbers. They were followed for decades. As those decades went forward, it became clear that his formula favored the bigger men. And so another formula came along. The one that came in and is still being used in weightlifting is the Sinclair formula, named in honor of Roy Sinclair, who's a PhD from MIT. And he came up with a, a more sophisticated, and most people say uh, a more fair way of uh, judging one man against another, people of different size. Every body weight has a coefficient attached to it. And so all you do is attach that coefficient to the uh, total, and then those will reveal what your Sinclair total is, and it will rank you. And it certainly does allow people who are smaller than the, the behemoths that dominate the super heavy class uh, to be able to say, ah, well, maybe you can lift almost 600 pounds in a clean and jerk, but you can't total three times body weight. It is, it's a numbers game. 